Hello everyone. Today we're going to be taking a quick look at Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown on iPhone and iPad. Just going over the graphics and performance. So first, let's go over the graphics. Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown runs at a lower presentation on iPhone and iPad if we compare it to Mac. Texture quality is noticeably worse. It's not too noticeable during general gameplay, especially on iPhone, but it is during cutscenes. The mobile version is running universally, I think, at the same graphics. The biggest difference for me is with shadow and reflection quality. I think this early scene in the game shows a great example of reflections on the ground. It looks like there is no form of anti-aliasing on iPhone and iPad 2. The resolution is decent on mobile though. I think it runs at roughly 900p to 1080p without using something like metal effects for upscaling. It would just be nice if on iPad the game took up the full screen real estate of the display. Instead, it's running at a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. The file size of this game on mobile is really small, 5.73GB compared to 27.45GB on Mac. I presume Ubisoft heavily compressed the game's file size by using much lower video settings. Now let's take a quick look at the game's performance. It looks like all supported iPhones run the game up to 60 FPS. My weakest supported device is an iPhone 12 Pro. The App Store requirements are quite misleading for games. While the iOS requirement for The Lost Crown is iOS 14, it actually requires 4GB or more of RAM. So something like my iPhone XR can't run the game and crashes when installing the files inside. The iPhone 12 Pro has 6GB of memory, so it's okay. I was pretty impressed that this phone is able to maintain 60 FPS throughout gameplay with the A14 Bionic chip, even after 20 or so minutes of gameplay. Then again, this game isn't really that demanding. The frame pacing sometimes has issues during combat, and it can be a little distracting, but it doesn't happen too often, thankfully. The FPS will often go down during cutscenes as well, but this doesn't really matter. I think it's cool that Ubisoft have gotten the game to use under 3GB of RAM too, but this is an indication of why the game isn't supported on devices with less than 4GB. My iPhone 16 Pro Max obviously has no issues playing the game. The frame pacing is perfect during general gameplay. Sometimes cutscenes have a little micro stuttering, but again, this doesn't really break the immersion of the game for me. If you don't have the metal HUD enabled, which is the majority of you, I don't think you'll see these micro stutters. If we take a look at the metal HUD, the GPU is sometimes hanging below 16 MS. 16 MS is the perfect target for 60 FPS. If we are seeing below this, it means that Ubisoft most likely could allow the game to run at slightly higher graphics. But I really don't think 120 FPS would actually be possible here. Because we'd be needing to see under like 10 MS frequently for this to be possible. All iPads run the game at 60 FPS too. If you have an iPad Pro, they have a 120 Hz display and the game runs at 120 FPS or up to 120 FPS. This is really cool, but it makes me confused on why Ubisoft have still not uncapped the FPS on Mac. It's still capped at 60. If my M4 iPad Pro can maintain 120 FPS frequently at like 1080p low, there is no reason that my M4 Mac Mini can't pull this off, like can't pull off much better results. The M4 chip on my iPad is often showing under 10ms in the HUD, 
and for memory under 3 gigabytes. This means M4 iPad Pro could probably pull off much higher graphics with ease. I hope in the future Ubisoft consider adding the advanced graphics options from Mac onto M series iPads because I think they could probably handle it. While it's cool that 120 FPS is possible here and it's locked to it, I would appreciate a 60 FPS toggle for the sole reason of preserving battery life on this iPad. Universally allowing the game to run at 120 FPS without a 60 FPS toggle on all iPad Pros, in my opinion, is a little silly. Yes, my M1 iPad Pro can pull off 120 FPS, but it has annoying micro stuttering issues throughout gameplay. In my opinion, it's very distracting during combat and even during cutscenes. If the game was running at 60 FPS on this iPad, I really do believe these problems would not exist. I would actually not be surprised if it's an oversight from Ubisoft that these devices are running at 120 FPS and are actually supposed to be running at 60 FPS. For the most part, the mobile port of Prince of Persia The Lost Crown is fine. The most baffling thing for me is how this isn't a universal purchase with the Mac App Store version. I also can't get cloud saves to work right now with the Ubisoft login between mobile and Mac. One reason it might not be universal is due to the game running on different versions of Metal. Maybe Ubisoft opted for Metal 2.3 to support older iPhone and iPad devices. And due to this, it can't be a universal app. Although I doubt that very much and I might just be speaking gobbledygook. Although maybe Ubisoft just weren't thinking, or they're lazy, or maybe they believe they'll earn more sales if it's a separate purchase from Mac, and then they make it free with an in-app purchase to buy the full game, and it entices more people to buy it on mobile. So that was Prince of Persia The Lost Crown on iPhone and iPad. Just a smaller video today. I don't imagine this is going to get too many people's eyes wanting to watch it, the video what. Um, but uh, I wanted to take a look at it because this is a really fun game and it's a good premium release on mobile. Um, if we ignore the universal purchase thing, it has all the content from PC and console. And I think that's really cool. And yeah, it just makes it a little, a little bit hard for me to recommend it without it being a universal purchase. But at the same time, I still recommend it because it's a premium game. So I'm like confused and I don't know what I'm doing. But I'm still happy it's on mobile.